Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the problem D that is Moscow Gorillas from Court Forces round 852 that was rated for Div 2. So the problem states that in winter the inhabitants of... Anyway, the problem is really long. I don't think there's a point in reading the entire problem. I'll try to give you the gist of it. If you haven't read the problem yourself, I'll recommend you to go ahead and read the problem. Cool. So what is expected out of us is that they have given us two permutation. Let's call uh, one permutation as P and the other permutation is Q. Now we have to tell them all the pairs L and R such that the sub arrays that are present in the in these sub pairs L and R uh, or in the sub arrays that can be denoted by the left point L and the right point R, they should be having an equal mix. So let's try to understand that with an example. Now let's consider L is equal to zero and R is equal to one. So considering zero base indexing, L equal to zero, R equal to one would be this sub arrays, right? Like right over here. So this uh, sub array has a mix equal to two. This sub array has a mix equal to three. So mix basically means mutually exclusive. I don't know what its exact uh, full form is, but what it actually means is that given a set of numbers, which is the lowest pos uh, positive integer that's missing from it. So the lowest positive integer that's missing from it is two. The uh, po lowest positive integer missing from it is three, right? So these two have different mixes. However, if we can uh, consider the entire array, then for that the mix is four in both the cases. Now, if we consider, let's say, um, these single values, right? So the mix for this particular uh, this particular subarray, even a even a array with a single element is a valid subarray, right? So the mix for this subarray is one. The mix for this subarray is also one. So there are total of two subarrays. That is the single uh, single point. That is this and this. So this has a mix of a mix of one. And the entire combination has a mix of four, right? So these are two valid L and R in this case. So the answer is two. Similarly, we have to find the mix for whatever uh, push, uh, whatever uh, you know uh, terms have been given to us or whatever uh, input has been given to us. So that's the entire question. Now let's get started with how can we solve it and what's the intuition behind it. Cool. So let's say this is the array that's given to us. And it would be having all the elements, let's say five, three, two, one, four. So this is a valid permutation. And there also would be another permutation. Let's call it five, three, one, two, four. Okay, five, three, one, two, four. That's cool. So a uh, easy observation over here is that the lowest, mi uh, lowest mix that you can get is actually one, right? Because zero is not a valid mix. So the lowest uh, mix is one. Now for all the sub arrays in which one is not present, the answer would be one itself. So let's consider this sub array right over here. Cool. So for this answer is one. For this also answer is one. For this sub array right over here, uh, one and two both are present, so answer would be three. But I'm not consider uh, considering any other answer than one. So I'm sure that if I'm considering one as one of the elements in a sub array, then it uh, then the mix would not remain one, right? So I want to avoid choosing one. So one was present over here and over, over here and over here. So I kept it out. I wanted to select the other possible values. So with that, I got that this is, uh, this is the, okay, let me change the color. Yeah. This is the sub array to the left, which has the value uh, which can have a max one and this is the sub array to the right which can have a max one also when we are saying this put uh, this sub array that was five three and also we had five three right so this was p and this was q i'm taking right uh, this right over here then over here all the valid sub arrays that are inside of this sub arrays by that what i mean is that even five 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 or three three or five three and five three right these three also are valid sub arrays. Now, how can we get the valid sub arrays out of a, a given array? So the number of valid sub arrays is actually n into n plus one by two. Over here, n is equal to two, so it became two into three divided by two, that was three. So that's trivial, I won't be explaining that. After that, what I can say is that it's easier to calculate the number of uh, possible sub arrays or the valid, uh, valid LNRs when max is equal to one, right? What about max is equal to two? Cool. So when we are saying that max is equal to two, what I want to do is that 
uh, I want to do the inverse thing possible. So I want to check what are the possible scenarios in which I can. Okay. Uh, so let let me try to explain that with an example. So let's say in uh, there was someone over here and one over here, and there were some other values over here, right? So these are the two areas I'm having. Cool. So I want to select max as equal to two. So max as two would be available uh, when I am having one, but I don't have two. But don't have two, right? So let's say two was present over here in the first array, and two was present over here in the second array. Now since I actually want one in the sub arrays, but I don't want two, so these sub arrays right over here, right? These sub arrays. So basically. when i'm saying this i mean these are the uh, things i can use but one definitely has to be in it right so i have to avoid two so two has been avoided i can't get two at either ends so i can't consider two from p or even two from q so what i can do is that i know that one has to be there so this sub, uh, this sub array has to be there in the final answer this part however uh, it's optional for me so let's say this has a length of a and this has a length of b i'm just assuming two random numbers so this has a length of a and this has a length of b length b is basically the array that was contain uh, the sub array that's containing one till the point i'm not having a two right so this is b so the number of sub arrays now that would actually contain a one but won't contain a uh, one won't contain a two would actually be a plus 1 into b plus 1 that's basic multiplication and the way you select sub arrays So that's also trivial. Now, what would happen is when I'll be checking for max is equal to three. In that case, I would say that I would want one. I also want two, but I don't want three. Cool. So in that case, what I'll have to do is that initially I was having uh, this sub array. I was saying that this is what I'm wanting. Now I'll say I need all this entire sub array. Now, in order to keep a track of the sub array, I can easily select two pointers. So I can say that the left boundary is given by left. and the right boundary is given by right don't worry if uh, these things seem to be a bit overwhelming to you as i'll explain the solution and the code it definitely would become more clear so that's what i'm going to do now let's look at some edge cases what can happen is that initially i was giving you example that 1 1 is over here and a 2 is over here in p and a 2 is over here in q it's possible that let's say 2 and 2 both were on the left uh, left side of it in that case what would happen So the scenario would remain still the same. Let's try to give it a bigger boundary. That would be the harder limit. So zero and n minus one, right? So what I'll say is that since both of them are to the uh, are to my left, then these are the sub arrays I can actually use, right? So this entire sub array I can use. So let's say this has a length of a, and this has a length of b. Then same thing would go over here. A plus one into b plus one is something I can use. Now, what would happen if two and two were actually available on its right? If two and two were were actually available on its right, then I could have said the same thing. So I would have said that cool. So my B would actually get terminated over here. My A would expand till here, right? So again, I would have said A plus one into B plus one. So th those are the edge cases, right? Or you can say that uh, those actually aren't uh, edge cases per se. but things you need to uh, keep in mind when you are writing the if else loops or when you are calculating the answer cool so that's the entire logic for this let me take you through the code the code is fairly simple i hope you are able to understand the code itself because uh, the logic behind it was somewhat uh, you know it was easy but it was hard to click so if it clicks then it's easy for you if it doesn't then it might take a very long time to understand so cool let's try to understand the code itself so initially i am taking two vectors I uh, just wanted to highlight one point over here. Uh, a few videos ago, someone pointed out that I am taking the entire array in a single uh, scene statement. So the reason I am able to do that is because I have predefined scenes like this, right? So I am able to take the entire arrays or the entire vectors or you can you can say entire pairs in a single line. So if you wanted, I'll try to give the submission link uh, in the video description or you can go to my uh, handle that is me Pranav. and you can copy this uh, code cool other uh, then what i'm doing is that i'm taking an order map so this is basically to get which value is available where in each of the vectors 
or in each of the permutations so i'll uh, since my permutations are a and b over here so i'm naming them log a and log b then i'm populating the values for log a and log b that's trivial now i'm initially setting my result as 1 now that uh, why is that the case? that the case because if you remember if we select the entire permutation p and q or entire permutation a and b in that case our max would be n, n plus 1 right so that is one case that i need to consider because when i'm considering the answer i'm considering it from n is equal to 2 till the time m is equal to n so because we are not considering max to be n plus 1 so i'm already considering it over here but that's a base case actually right then what I'm saying is that the left pointer or the left boundary of the subarray I'm considering is going to be minimum of whatever is in my a1, right? Or, or whatever is uh, like, is, is that's the minimum of whatever value comes first in P or Q. So let's say my one was appearing at a left end in P, then I'll be providing the index of P over here. I'll be providing the index of Q, whatever the minimum is, that's uh, that that will be getting stored in left, whatever the maximum would be, that will get stored in right. So now my right, uh, so my result would be, okay, let's try to explain this a bit. This was the edge case, not sure if I explained that well. Okay, so let's say this was my one. Let's say this is P, P and this is Q. And this was my one. Let's say this this is the one, cool. Let's try to extend it a bit. Cool. So over here, this is two. This is also two. And this is one. So this is a valid array, whatever the values are over here. This also is a valid array. By valid array, valid sub arrays, I mean the uh, val uh, arrays that would have a max equal to one, right? So this is valid, this is valid, and this also would be valid, right? So this basically is given by left, so this is left, in, uh, so left is pointing over here, right? So this is left into left plus one divided by two. This would be n minus right. So the same sub array formula would get applicable over here also. This place is actually right minus left minus one. Minus one because I'm not including the ones. Had I included the ones, then it would have been a plus one. But since we are not including those two values, so it's, it's a minus one over here. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's uh, easy to understand. That's exactly what I've done over here. So what I'm saying is that firstly add the left subarrays, then add the, add the right subarrays. After that, whatever it was in the middle of them. But since this value can very well be negative, so I'm already multiplying it, uh, like I'm uh, selecting whatever the minimum, uh, whatever the maximum is zero or whatever value I'm going to get over here. Because this can be negative and that can make our answer go wrong. Cool. After that, I want to select uh, sub arrays that are having max from two till the point of n or uh, from two to n. Cool. So the location of left or the local left right now would be the minimum of uh, uh, like there are two uh, two permutations p and q now out of them one would be having a uh, like both of them would be having the value m obviously now the value that is available to the leftmost would be stored in lock left the value that is available to the right would be stored in lock right now there are t uh, three conditions like like i explained in the solution so there's a there's, there could be a condition that even the left uh, ve leftmost value of m uh, could be present to the right of the initial value or the to, to the global right in that case i can say say that all the values so okay let's go back to the okay cool so over here what i meant by that is that let's say one one over here one one was over here now my two two appeared over here that's the same example i'm assuming So one one was over here. So my left was let's say this was the index two, this was three, this was four, five, six, seven, right? So my left was set to two, my right was set to three. Now my lock left is gonna be six, and my lock right is gonna be seven. I hope that's easy to understand at least. So now what I'll say is that my lock left is greater than or equal to right itself, right? So my local left is actually greater than or equal to right. In that, uh, because of that, what I can say is that whatever values are uh, to the right of it, 
so these values and these values right so these are uh, up till this value i mean so these all would be valid sub arrays so this is something you definitely have to consider so the number of sub arrays possible over here would be this is a this is b so that would be a plus 1 into b plus 1 right so this will be 3 into 3 that is 9 i hope that's understandable so that's exactly what i have done so i'm saying if that's the case then you multiply these two values cool else if there could be a case that my left or the local right is actually less than the global left available so this is the case wherein the two two are present to the left of one one right if that's the case then you do the same thing but just with the different sub arrays now the other case is that uh, it it could be the case that one left uh, the local left is to the left of the global left and the lo local right is to the right of the global right in that case i'll have to uh, carefully select the arrays now uh, if i give you an example of that so okay i think i misplaced my pencil anywho so that's easier to understand actually so let's say my, i i was having a 1 1 right and then i had a 2 2 cool so one of the twos is to the left of the one and one of the two is to the right of the one in that case i have to select the valid sub arrays so that's what i'm doing over here the only reason i don't explain these things in detail is because uh, if you're coding then it's better for you to uh, try to implement these things on your own and try to understand the gist of it If I do a spin fo uh, spin fooding right over here itself, then it's really tough for you to grow. So that's the only motivation for me not to uh, go deep into all the code and stuff. But if you still feel you are stuck, you can definitely let me know in the comment section. So after that, what I have to say is that I have to update the global left and right as well, right? Because uh, when I uh, if let's say current currently I'm calculating for m is equal to five, right? So in the next step, I'll be calculating for m is equal to six. now when I, when i'll be calculating for m is equal to 6 i would want that the array i'm having should actually have values up till 5 right so the left and right boundaries should have been adjusted in that way only in, uh, only if i have the values up till 5 or the values from 1 to 5 only then i can have a m is equal to 6 i hope that's understandable now so after that i'm just printing out the result You can see it's a AC solution. The time taken is also pretty low. This would definitely give you AC. I don't think there's anything that can go with, uh, go wrong with this. Mm, the memory is also kind of fine. Uh, one thing to note over here is sometimes if you feel that the memory is too much, just try to uh, like see the space complexity of your solution over here. The space complexity is pretty easy to calculate. The space complexity is actually order of n. You can't reduce uh, lower than that because anyway, uh, like keeping the track of the permutation is gonna take you some space. So yeah. That's it. So that's it for the video. If you still have a doubt, let me know. More than happy to help you out. Cool guys. Thanks for watching this video. Bye bye.